When SpongeBob has to go up to the roof of the Krusty Krab, he ends up being too afraid to come down, thus giving us the episode Stuck on the Roof. Since he's the Krusty Krab's only fry cook, it's not long before they have to move the entire restaurant's operation up to the roof and convert it into a full-on second level. Squidward, being the grumpy man he is, chooses to stay on the first floor and class it up with some new decorations. And if you look closely, one of them is a recreation of his sculpture that got destroyed in the museum during the episode Are You Happy Now? A fun little Easter egg. Here's a clip. Oh, oh, time to go home already? Shown in this oh, what the? This, this, this is my sculpture. How did it get here? Oh, you're just in time. Art lovers, this is Squidward Tentacles, creator of this piece. Ooh, wow, your work in a museum, Squidward. Gosh, I can't believe it. In the episode Girls' Night Out, Sandy invites Karen and Mrs. Puff to celebrate her latest scientific achievement. The other two ladies are having a rough week dealing with the annoying men in their lives, namely Plankton and Spongebob. So Sandy suggests that they use their girls' night out to pull some pranks on them and get some much, much needed revenge. Now the funniest prank that they pull is putting a virtual reality helmet on a sleeping Spongebob to fool him into thinking he's gotten his driver's license in a new driving boat. Now if you look closely, we've seen this license before. We've seen it in two other episodes, Sleepy Time and No Free Rides, and it even has the exact same expiry date of December 14th, 2003. So this was definitely an Easter egg. Here's a clip. Oh, can I help you? Hello, Mr. SpongeBob. I'm just here to deliver your driver's license. Congratulations. Oh, uh, thanks. I Your new boat! My new boat! <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> Wait a minute! I don't have a driver's license! <laughs> wow! My driver's license! I can't believe it! I should take a good picture! And the way you pulled the anchor out? Genius! I never thought I'd say this, but here's your driver's license. In the 20th episode of Season 9, SpongeBob joins a notorious gang known as the Sharks, a Greece-inspired group of, well, sharks who break the law and wear cool leather jackets. Now, due to the fact that this group is a legitimate street gang, it would make sense for the sharks to spray paint or tag their logo throughout Bikini Bottom. And it seems they did, as during the episode Early Brains, when SpongeBob and Patrick sneak up on Mr. Krabs and Mrs. Puff, you can see the shark's logo spray painted on one of the walls. It's a pretty cool Easter egg. Here's a clip. Might finally be the day that yes, Eugene. They steal a little kiss. Oh, 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 Eugene! I thought you'd never ask. Come here, you. What a bloody oh, Eugene! <laughs> wow! And we are. The Shanks! Ooh, fancy stitching! In the episode, There's a Sponge in My Soup, weird name I know, like such a weird name, Mr. Krabs isn't too happy about the group of hippies keeping warm by the hydrothermic vent behind the Krusty Krab. So they end up relocating inside the restaurant, specifically inside the warm crabby soup pot, and Mr. Krabs sends SpongeBob into the soup on a mission to deal with the troublesome situation. Now at first, the hippies think SpongeBob is a square, and it's really funny, I gotta say, this scene is hilarious. But SpongeBob ends up going full on flower child, 
and even somehow encounters Hippie Patrick in the suit. Now, if you're a true SpongeBob fan, you'll know that this isn't the first time that we've seen both SpongeBob and Patrick dressed as hippies, as they both have on the exact same outfits they wore while protesting in the episode SpongeBob's Last Stand. Yet another cool and interesting Easter egg. Yeah, so I'm going to show a clip right now, but before I do, I just want to say thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. I'm Cartoon Cory, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Oh, wow, SpongeBob, you just blew our minds. Dan, how's the eviction going? Oh, wow, you're beautiful. <laughs> you went too deep. You've gone full flower child. Oh no! It's working, Patrick! They're pulling the highway! Something absolutely terrible happens in the season 4 episode, All That Glitters. SpongeBob breaks his favorite spatula. And as you can imagine, this really ruins SpongeBob's day. Don't worry though, at the very end of the episode, we get this hilarious scene of SpongeBob being reunited with his old friend, and the episode ends with everything back to normal. Now the Easter egg in question can be found during this scene, and it has to do with everyone's favorite incidental, Fred. If you're a true SpongeBob fan, you'll know that this isn't the first time we've seen Fred in this outfit, as it's actually a reference to the outfit he wears in the classic season 3 episode, One Crab's Trash. Here's a clip. I would give serious consideration to a replacement spatula. Oh! Uh-uh, no. Touchy, touchy the lace spatula. It's very, very expensive. I'm sorry. Of course, if you purchase this fine item, you may hold it. Uh, 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 sir, I'll give you a million dollars for that hat. The episode, 20,000 Patties Under the Sea, has an Easter egg in its title. For those who may not know, the title is a reference to a Julie Verne novel, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. That's not the only Easter egg present in this episode, though. The con man from the episode Chocolate with Nuts is back again, and he cons SpongeBob and Patrick once more. Now, after he cons SpongeBob and Patrick, he says, hey, thanks again, guys. This means he remembers the characters from the last time he conned them. Another cool thing you may not have known about this episode is that Gene Simmons from the band Kiss plays the sea monster in the episode. Pretty cool. Are you sure you don't want to be our first customer, sir? Uh... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Wait! We'll pay ya! Hey, thanks again, guys. Good luck with the restaurant. Thank you, sir. Come again. It's specially designed to cradle each candy bar in velvet-lined comfort. <laughs> I'm wasting my time. You don't need these bags. We need them! We need them! So long, boys! Happy hunting! <laughs> Suckers! One of my favorite SpongeBob episodes is Season 3's Just One Bite. In this episode, Squidward tastes his very first Krabby Patty. And though he lies and claims to hate them at first, by the end of the episode, we find out the truth. SpongeBob reveals that there is a patty vault hidden in the Krusty Krab that contains hundreds of Krabby Patties. And in the ending scene, we see Squidward break into this place to get his fix. Now, aside from this episode, we haven't really seen the patty vault since. However, it does appear in the episode Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 6 in the form of an Easter egg. It's only on screen for a short amount of time, but it can be found during this scene. Yeah, here's a clip. There it is. Holy shrimp! I don't know where to start. But all that matters is that it's just you and me and nobody. Squidward? 
Is that you? Blocks, home to over five billion Krabby Patties. What evil mastermind would dare infiltrate this fortified fort and make off with its treasure? It is I, Kelp Thing. Do what I do. Stop! You can't do that. Forbidden! The next Easter egg on this list comes from the season five episode, To Love a Patty. This episode focuses on SpongeBob falling in love with a Krabby Patty. SpongeBob is so in love with this Krabby Patty that he saves the burger from being eaten. But take a look at the person who is about to eat the Krabby Patty. Does he look familiar to you? Well, if you're a true SpongeBob veteran, he should. This is the same fish who briefly appears in the episodes Shanghai and Krabby Land. In Shanghai, the fish is seen through the Flying Dutchman's telescope. And in Krabby Land, he is one of the fish who helps SpongeBob stall the kids. Here's a clip of the Easter egg with audio. Where's my Krabby Patty? I'm here, muscle boy. It's about time. Let's see who we can find. Captain, there's a guy we can scare. I had four biscuits and I ate one. Our first Easter egg can be found in the episode Welk Attack, and it's pretty cool as it references one of my favorite older Spongebob episodes, Suds. In this episode, a herd of large sea whelks invade Bikini Bottom, causing all sorts of problems. Why are they invading, you may ask? Well, it turns out that the whelks are sick, as explained by Sandy near the end of the episode. Now, during this scene, Spongebob compares the whelks' sickness to Suds, the same illness Spongebob had to deal with all the way back in the season one episode titled well, suds. This is a really cool Easter egg. Here's a clip. Well, golly! No wonder they're all grumpy. Them whelks are full of germs. Why, they're sicker than a bull with the squirrel pox. I know just what to do. After all, I've had the suds. I just have to absorb the whelk snot, and they'll return to normal. <gasps> What's wrong with you? You're paler than a baby seahorse. The suds? Here's that patty you wanted, Mr. Crab, sir. All right, SpongeBob, you're too sick to work. No, Mr. Krabs, I'm okay. Honestly. The episode SpongeBob's Last Stand is all about SpongeBob and Patrick protesting the demolition of their favorite Bikini Bottom location. Jellyfish Fields. Now at one point, we see a parade celebrating the construction of the Shelly Super Highway. And if you're a true SpongeBob fan, you'll notice that the band of the parade is wearing the exact same outfits as Squidward's band in Band Geeks, thus making for another interesting little Easter egg. I love these season one, two, or three callbacks. They're the best. Here's a clip. Couldn't come, they died. Then who's that? Ah, that would be my band! We're ready to perform, Squidward. Well, Squiddy, this is exactly how I pictured your band would look. That's his eager face. <laughs> the next episode we'll be talking about today actually features two Easter eggs. So let's just skip the plot summary and get right to the good stuff. The first is a SpongeBob's Last Stand reference, with this Save the Jellyfish sign being shown in the pile of rubble. Another reference is this ukulele, as it's most likely a reference to the ukulele used by SpongeBob in the episode of Fun, which is another reference to an older SpongeBob episode. I love those. Here's a clip. Chum bucket, sludge bucket, highway fly away. Lily liver, pizza giver, mashed potato, kelp tomato. Oh, we are trying to say is give 
I can't take him much longer. I hope he's not in any pain. Wherever he is. I think he's doing just fine. Mr. Krabs, you gotta get up. We gotta get out of here. Oh. Okay, T-Boy, I think I'm good. Remember to drink plenty of fluids. Look, SpongeBob, you see all this stuff? In the episode, Whatever Happened to SpongeBob, SpongeBob develops amnesia after running away from Bikini Bottom and eventually finds himself in New Kelp City. This place is very similar to New York, and believe it or not, SpongeBob actually becomes mayor of this place. However, due to him having amnesia and forgetting his name, he goes by a new name, that being Mayor Cheesehead Brown Pants. Well, this is actually referenced in the Season 7 episode, One Course Meal, when Plankton literally refers to SpongeBob as Cheesehead. Here's a clip. Well, before I show it, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I appreciate it. I'm Cartoon Cory, and I'll see you guys next time. Leave a comment below letting me know other cartoons you want me to cover or mistakes I missed. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Here's that clip. Peace. For this, I appoint you Mayor of New Kelp City! <laughs> What you doing laying in the middle of the road? Go away, cheesehead! Can't you see I'm trying to get run over? In fact, better yet, just step on me as hard as you can. Would you do that for me? Our first Easter egg revolves around some familiar fish we've seen before. In the season 6 episode, Krabby Road, Plankton creates an entire band just to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. Now it's a good episode, with some great moments. And if we watch closely during the episode's opening, we can spot an interesting Season 3 Easter egg. In the episode, No Weenies Allowed, Spongebob struggles to get into a new bar called the Salty Spittoon, due to it only accepting the toughest of the toughest fish. Spongebob is forced to wait in line with some of these tough fish, but this isn't the last time we've seen them. In the opening of the Season 6 episode, Krabby Road, they make their return, thus making for a fun little Season 3 reference. They're in jail now, so I wonder what they did, but yeah, here's a clip. You need to have muscles. You need to have muscles on your muscles. You need to have muscles on your eyeballs. Ew. Looks like a rip snorting good time, SpongeBob. Yeah, let's go in. And this is the maximum security level. Since this is your first day, I'll let you peek at our number one inmate. He's too dangerous to let him around the other inmates. Our next mistake can be found in the episode Suction Cup Symphony. This episode is all about Squidward writing his very own symphony. Now during this scene, just as Squidward finally finishes writing his song, he has the same look on his face that he had in the episode Squid's Day Off, during the scene where he locked himself inside his house. Oh, also, it isn't necessarily an Easter egg, I guess, but the fish playing the piano in this episode is actually the same fish that SpongeBob sits next to at Reef Cinema in the episode Something Smells. I did it! <laughs> yes! There. <laughs> now I'll have to stay here and enjoy myself. <laughs> I'm not even gonna think about you know who, and the you know what, doing I don't care. <laughs> But you should enjoy the movie anyway. As most of you know, Squidward is an artist, so it's no surprise that one of his old paintings is referenced in Season 6. The painting in particular are his 483 self-portraits first seen in the episode Gone, and they appear when SpongeBob is having tea with Squidward in the episode Not Normal. 
Another reference can be found as SpongeBob and Patrick are belly sliding through town. As they go off a ramped truck, Oyster Stadium can be seen for the first time in a while as they are falling. Here's a clip of both references or Easter eggs with audio. I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but please come in, SpongeBob. Thank you. Tell me, what are you doing cooped up in here when the weather outside is so normal? Well, today is dusting day, the day I dust my 483 self portraits. Wow, that's something you don't see in the average house. Squidward, have you seen Gary? He's gone missing! Squidward? Not a sign of Squidward anywhere. Squidward? You up here? <laughs> mommy, Mommy, what are those things? Those are undesirables, honey. Our last Easter egg can be found in the episode Boating Buddies. In this episode, instead of the typical SpongeBob Boating School episode, is all about Squidward attending boating school after getting a ticket. As you can imagine, this was all SpongeBob's fault, of course. But luckily for him, SpongeBob decides to help out, eventually leading us to this scene where Squidward does his driving exam. For a few frames, the rare incidental character Granny appears, thus making her first appearance since her debuted episode, Have You Seen This Snail? I'm going to show you guys a clip, but before I do, I just want to say thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. I'm Cartoon Cory, and leave a comment down below letting us know other cartoon mistakes you want us to cover in the future. For now, though, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, make sure to subscribe. If you subscribe, I'll give you a cookie, a chocolate chip cookie. It'll be yummy. All right, peace. Just let's go on it! Uh -huh. Miss Tufsy, oh, Grandma finally. So, who here is familiar with this character? This character is named Granny, and she, along with Miss Grusselpus, are both pretty rare in terms of incidentals. They don't show up very often. Well, they make a slight cameo in the episode Grandma's Secret Recipe, as both characters appear while SpongeBob and Great Grandma are knitting. This isn't necessarily the most mind blowing Easter egg or cameo, I'll admit, but hey, it's pretty cool. Our first Easter egg is a bit of a cheat, as it's actually from the Patrick Star Show, but it's really cool, so just hear me out. See this guy? He's Incidental70, and he has a massive fanbase online. Despite only appearing in like a few season 1 and 2 episodes, the internet just loves this guy. However, he hasn't actually made another appearance since season 1 or 2. Well, after being gone for nearly, like, 12 seasons, Incidental 70 made his long-awaited return in the recent The Patrick Star Show episode titled Yard Sale. To be fair, his role is only a minor one, and he doesn't actually speak at all during the episode, but he is there looking as cute as ever, and it's awesome to see him make a comeback. Here's a clip with audio. SpongeBob's back. So I guess this next one is less of an easter egg and more of a theory. In the episode Food Con Castaways, Spongebob and the gang find themselves lost in a random forest. Now throughout the episode, the forest isn't given an actual name, but a lot of people online speculate that this could be Kelp Forest, the same forest from the iconic season 3 episode Club Spongebob. We don't know for sure. But if you need some more proof, it seems the title card for Food Con Castaways is taken from a background scene of Club Spongebob. 
Interesting, huh? Here's a clip from the episode with Audia. Talk about a cool Easter egg. Sad clowns. Sad. Clowns. What was that? I was already here. <laughs> Another cool Easter egg can be found in the episode Biddy Sitting. Well, to be honest with you guys, the entire second half of the episode is essentially an Easter egg, as it features two classic characters. In the episode Chocolate with Nuts, SpongeBob goes door to door with Patrick, lying to people about their magic chocolate bars, and eventually come across this dynamic duo, Incidental 87, aka Mary, and her mother. Well, Mary has shown up a few times over the years since her debut, but her mother has been absent ever since Chocolate with Nuts. That is, until a few years ago, as she plays a major role in the episode Biddy Sitting, and it is a major nostalgia trip. Here's a clip. What? What are they selling? Chocolates! What? Chocolates! I can't hear you! They're selling chocolates! They're selling chocolates? Yeah! Chocolate. I remember when they first invented chocolate. <laughs> well, you go out and dance and revel. <laughs> we watch your little devil. <laughs> I found a baby. <laughs> it's the ugliest baby I've ever seen. SpongeBob season five isn't a bad season, but it definitely isn't the best. However, there is one season 5 episode that I actually really enjoyed, and that's the Donut of Shame. This episode is very short, I think it's only like 4 or 5 minutes, but it's sweet and features a hilarious plot where Patrick panics due to accidentally eating Spongebob's donut after a late night of partying. Well, this episode is referenced in the season 9 episode, The Executive Treatment. It happens very fast, but during this scene, Patrick begins to freak out about the donut before, well, being insulted by Squidward. This one you kind of have to hear it for it to really make sense, so I'm going to show a clip. Before I do though, I just want to say thank you so much for watching today's video guys. I'm Cartoon Cory, and leave a comment down below letting us know other cartoons you want us to cover on the channel. Heading into the summer, we're going to start branching off from just Spongebob. But anyways, here's those clips, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Was great. The donut is gone. The donut is gone. Our first Easter egg can be found in the season 12 episode, The Knitwitting. There are actually a few found in this episode, so like, let's just get right into them. As SpongeBob mobily walks through this alley, there are a bunch of references to older episodes. My favorite of the bunch is this graffiti drawing of Doodlebob referencing the iconic season 2 episode Frankendoodle. More importantly though, is this graffiti reading Squidward Smells, as this is a reference to one of my personal favorite Spongebob episodes, Sailor Mouth. There are a few other small references, but these two are definitely the best of the best. Leave a comment down below letting me know any that I missed. Anyways though, here's a clip of the Easter eggs with audio. Aw, <laughs> oh, look at him. Ain't he a doll? All he needs is a tie. Ready for action! Quack! 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 Nematodes are people too! Ha, oh, those nematodes! Here's one somebody didn't finish! Squidward smells! Good! Ah! Can you help find me? I'm pretty. Weirdo! <laughs> SpongeBob has encountered a ton of interesting pets throughout the show's 13 seasons, 
ranging from other pet snails to even a pet seahorse. Well, there's a little callback to this in the episode The Clam Whisperer. I believe it's from season 12. As when SpongeBob is seen following some clams, three classic pets can be seen drinking out of a river with straws. Larry the Snail from the season 2 episode Dumped, Rex the Worm also from the same episode Dumped, and finally, Mystery the Seahorse from the episode My Pretty Seahorse. It's cool to see all of these pets show up all in one episode for one Easter egg. Here's a clip. Who needs worms anyway? Welcome home, newest best friend! Come on out, don't be shy! Hi guys! Say hello to my new pal, Rex! Because of her mysterious behavior, I have decided to name her Mystery. This next one also has to do with our favorite seahorse, Mystery. So let's skip the plot summary and get right into the Easter egg as Mystery makes a really cool, and I mean really cool cameo, in the episode Gary and Spot, and can be seen during this dance party scene. Oh, also, the classic character, Pluffy Fluffy, from the episode A Pal for Gary, you might remember it like turns into a monster, also makes an appearance in this episode, and can be seen in this cage during this scene, thus making for another nostalgic Easter egg. is Puffy Fluffy, and he'll keep you company while I'm at work. You two get to know each other. I'll be right back. Hey, this is my jam! They say that music soothes the savage beast. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, but sometimes it works on knucklehead too. That's how you do it, you do it, you do it. <laughs> Gary and Spot are on a mission to save their pals. Okay, and last, but certainly not least, our final Easter egg can be found in the episode The Ballad of Filthy Muck. This episode is all about Patrick going out of his way to become the most grossest and stinkiest person in all of Bikini Bottom. But more importantly, the episode also has a really cool easter egg. If you look closely, during this scene, an ice cream sign at Glove World says Glove Flavor. And though this might seem like nothing, it's actually a reference to the candy glove flavor that Spongebob literally ate in the iconic episode Rock Bottom at the location of the same name. He actually hates this flavor, so yeah. I'm going to show a clip, but before I do, I just want to say thank you so much for all of the support on the channel, guys. I'm Cartoon Cory, and I seriously love every single one of you. I wish we could just all watch Spongebob together all the time. Sadly, we can't, but make sure to subscribe. If you do, uh, I'll get you a chocolate chip cookie. It'll be very yummy. Very, very yummy. Anyways, though, I'm Cartoon Cory, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Getting hungry. Glove candy dispenser. Good thing I went to Glove World. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ew, glove flavored. Hey, what's that? Candy machine. But you two stink! <laughs>